government. Thank you, Mr. The Honourable Member for St. Albert Edmonton. Mr. Speaker, Global News reported that last January the Prime Minister was briefed by CSIS about a vast campaign of interference by Beijing wow. in the 2019 election. After two weeks of silence, suddenly and narrowly, the Prime Minister claims that he was not briefed about candidates. But that, of course, does not address the broader question about whether the Prime Minister was briefed about Beijing's interference. So was the Prime Minister briefed, yes or no? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. This House that the purpose of foreign interference is to sow chaos and throw our democratic institutions into disarray. That's why we're taking action to combat attempted inter foreign interference, Mr. Speaker, beginning with our national security agencies, who conduct investigations and use all the tools at their disposal. It also includes significant work to shore up Canada's institutions and critical infrastructure, like Bill C-26, to bolster cybersecurity and give new tools to the RCMP. I invite all members of this House to support the government in supporting Bill C-26. The Honourable Member for St. Albert Edmonton. Mr. Speaker, my question was about what the Prime Minister may have learned in January. Non-answers like that and incomplete information from the Prime Minister after two weeks of silence hardly instill confidence that the Prime Minister is being open and transparent with Canadians. So again, with respect to January, was the Prime Minister briefed? Did he receive intelligence memos? What does he know about Beijing's interference? Here, 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 here. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I will repeat again that safeguarding our Canadian democracy is an issue that we will always take seriously, Mr. Speaker, because it poses a threat to the health of our very democracy. That's why we have listened to the independent panel, which confirmed that the 2019 election was free and fair. That's why we passed laws to modernize the Elections Act, Mr. Speaker. We will always stand up and protect our democracy because it's a responsibility that we take seriously, Mr. Here. Speaker. The, the Honourable Member for Megante Clérable. Mr. Speaker, it's not by not answering the question that Canadians are going to feel that they have trust in their elections. We're asking a very simple question. For two weeks now, we've been asking the same question to the government. Did the Prime Minister get briefed on foreign interference from the Chinese Communist regime in the elections in 2019? We've been asking this very simple question. He said that he wasn't briefed on the funding of 11 candidates. Was he briefed on this foreign interference from Beijing in the election? Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I will repeat what I have been saying in this House numerous times, that we need to take a step back and remember what the purpose of foreign interference is. It is to create chaos in this country. We will stand up for our democracy. We will always ensure that our democratic institutions are, are protected. That includes, Mr. Speaker, providing resources to our security agencies, to the RCMP, to ensure they have the tools to investigate when they need to. We are trusting that we will always, always stand up for Canadian democracy, Mr. Speaker, and I invite all members of this House to join us. The Honourable Member for La Pointe de Lille. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister has just returned from the La Francophonie Summit in Tunisia. And while he was there, he repeated hand on heart the importance of promoting and protecting the French language. But it's the same thing as with the environment. At COP27, Canada says one thing outside of the country and then it does something different in reality. Has the Liberal Prime Minister explained to his allies in La Francophonie why his Bill C-13 will uh, continue to anglicize Quebec, the only Francophone nation in North America? The Honourable Minister of Official Languages. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. First of all, Mr. Speaker, we are the first government to recognize the decline of French around the country, including in Quebec. And that's why we are moving forward with an ambitious bill, a bill with teeth, to ensure that we can do our fair share to contribute to reversing the decline of French. Mr. Speaker, for a few weeks now, the Bloc and the Conservatives have been playing political games at committee, and I don't understand why 
they don't want to move forward with a bill, a bill that is going to make a real difference in the lives of Canadians. I would like to remind the member for uh, Paul neuf cartier that just because he's not looking at me, that doesn't mean that I can't see him yelling in the house.